Thank you, House Chairman. It's been a lively debate this afternoon, and there's been some good points made by both sides. But I'm afraid the speakers on the government benches haven't really risen to the occasion of defending the President's speech and telling us how the plans to set out would be implemented. Because of that, because of course, that was the big lacuna from last Thursday's speech. A very nice sounding plan, as some have called it a wish list or a Santa letter. But there was nothing on actually how it's going to be done. And that is the big question mark that hangs over the president's head. The, the finance minister is fond of speaking of the, the mouth of the hippo, the big debt, the, the big gap between government debt and government revenue. But there's another hippo's mouth that needs to be addressed. And that's the big gap between what the president says and what this government does. And that wasn't addressed today, not by any of the government speakers. In fact, we've gone back and we've tracked exactly how many times the president has made these same promises before since he was elected more than two years ago. We went back 520 days, Mr. President, to your first State of the Nation address, and we tracked them all. We found that in 73% of cases, there has been no progress at all on the reform commitments you've made. And we've put all of that available in a document. I, I invite you to, to visit this, our webpage to have a look. Where there has been progress, we've given credit, like an in independent uh, power producer regulation. We've given credit for that. But still, in most cases, there's been no progress to speak of at all. Now, today we heard from the Minister of Tourism, who has a, a very lovely uh, shirt on, but who told us that her plan for implementation is going to be another council that's going to be responsible for speeding up implementation. Now, the general rule is that the speed of implementation is inversely proportional to the number of councils and committees involved. I don't think that's going to help at all. In fact, it's quite terrifying. Now, the consequences of this delay, Mr. President, were clear before lockdown, and they are even clearer, terrifyingly so now, after lockdown. We have an economy that teeters on the edge, and a society that increasingly feels like it's spinning out of control. And we heard them again today, Mr. President. The purveyors of hate and division are back again, back from the past, back from the 90s, preying on the poor to drive South Africans apart and preach violence as an answer. We heard the Honorable Shivambu call you a sellout, a disgusting slur. That is to be rejected. And that is why in the end, your plan failed to bring South Africans together around a vision of growth and reform that, that pulls us towards the center instead of giving more oxygen to those who are driving us apart. You have to now show that you are serious about what you said. Serious not just about the language of reform, but actual reform. Here are three things that you must do to show that you are serious, Mr. President. Ministers who stand in the way of reform should be removed from office. Number two, commit to clear and immovable time frames for implementation that we as Parliament and the public can hold you to. And number three, don't choose South African Airways. Stop all further bailouts of SAA. That would show you are serious. It is immoral, immoral, Honorable Shabalala to cut essential public services to fund yet another bailout for SAA. Between schools and SAA, choose schools. Between hospitals and SAA, choose hospitals. If you dither any your longer- time is up. All right, thank you very much. Choose the people of South Africa over SAA.